sessions. The topic of lecture sessions is Ontology of Geometry and Physical World by Professor C.C. Roy. And uh, next one is Beauty and Education in Indic Thinking, Professor Kanji Gopinath. So, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor will be a chair uh, in place of Professor K.D. Tirpati. So, I request uh, Professor C.C. Roy to please start your lecture. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, now I will speak on ontology of geometry and physical world. So, I will start with uh, the famous hymns from Rig Veda. And it is, uh, I mean, English translation is like this universal form and harmony are born of cosmic will, and hence there is night born and hence the below ocean of space, and from the below ocean of space was born time, the year, ordaining days and nights, the ruler of every movement. So this is the famous hymn for Rig Veda, Mandala 10. And plan of my uh, present talk is like, uh, we'll start with form, how form is being produced, and uh, then we come in science, uh, the use of geometry and how the geometry is used for the description of physical world. And then, uh, as I talked in my address in inaugural session, sense dependent or uh, in the language of modern neuroscience we call dynamic geometry and deductive geometry. And Finally, I will speak on ontological issues and sacred geometry. So, uh, le let me start with form, because uh, the form is essentially related to geometric structure, and the issue is how the form is being emerged, and emerged from where, emerged from more primitive notions. Let me try to clarify. So before that, uh, let me start with what is real about form. Ideas are part of a conceptual truth involving properties such as a priority, innateness, and sameness. However, quite obviously sameness, an aspect behind symmetry, is not everything that is signaled by perception of form. As form appears to us, it is made up of differences, boundaries, parts, and their relations. And these things appear to be real, and there is an usual identification of the real with the physical world. So, the perceived form, along with its natural identification with physical, establish, establishes another truth, a factual truth. This, in turn, was at the focus of uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein. Now I will come with forms, patterns, and geometry, because uh, in science, uh, all aspects of science, in physics, chemistry, in classical physics like Newtonian paradigm, or uh, in, in quantum physics, or in relativity, even at the modern quantum chemistry, the forms are very, very important. So, here we say all patterns, forms, can be meticulously described and processed mathematically as they basically can be transformed into geometry. And many studies and mathematical formulae that previously were most in use as theories is today where so many people own or have admission to powerful computer in practical use everywhere. I mean, if you use modern computer, you can generate many, many types of forms and patterns often especially for calculating pattern, so uh, based on particular context. So the issue is that we can generate many, many patterns or forms using computer, computer simulations, and also in nonlinear dynamics. So let me start with the patterns called fractal patterns. So these patterns 
let me go back. This pattern is your fractal patterns means normally uh, in any kind of pattern say in a table, chair or any kind of everybody object we say the dimension of the geometry is like integer dimension like one dimensional is a line, two dimension like this one a surface or three dimensions. So they are called one, two, three, four, etc. This is called integral dimensions. But in case of in other cases like this pattern, their dimension are not integers. Say 1.2, 1.3 or 2.1 or 2.2. If you look at the coast of the river, they have like this kind of dimension. It is not integral. They are called fractal dimensions. And these are uh, this type of fractal patterns you can also find in nature. So here all forms of patterns are basically possible to describe through mathematics. So you have kind of mathematical equations or mathematical dynamics and then you can generate every kinds of patterns or forms using modern computer simulation. So here you look this is again we are coming to the nature it's a frog and uh, this pattern is not really integral dimension, it's called fractal dimensions. I mean fractal means fraction like instead of two dimension this object you have 2.3, 2.4 etc. So they, they are found in nature. This is like snowflake, snowflake geometric pattern. Here also look this is not the usual <coughs> integral dimension it is called fractal dimensions and there is a math methods by which you can calculate it what is the exact dimension whether it is 2 point something 2.5 2.6 or 2.7 you can calculate it so in nature we have many many patterns which are integral dimension as well as fractional dimension we say fractal fractal patterns now uh, vibration and pattern formation, I mean I am going before to the ontology, uh, let us try to be familiar with some kind of patterns or vibrations which exist in nature itself. And vibration and pattern formation, uh, there was a German physicist and also he is a musician, he, he is called founder father of acoustics, I mean sound, sound vibration and he first studied the forms created by acoustic vibration and uh, Ralph Abraham, my co-author, he is an American mathematician, he did lot of works on uh, pattern formations in nonlinear dynamics and they are able to produce like using kind of vibration how can you generate patterns in nature uh, in uh, say morphogenesis for the biological systems like evolving from one particular form of the animal to another particular form of the animals. So it is possible in modern dynamical system theory that uh, you, you can also have generate possible types of patterns with the help of vibrations. So though the founder was uh, this German physicist and musician and Nowadays many people are trying to uh, produce the patterns using even chanting the mantra. Say you chant Om Mantra and uh, you, you put some medium there and this is a acoustic vibration. So this chanting by chanting the particular type of mantra you can generate different, different very unique type of pattern. So people say that in chanting Om Mantra it corresponds to a definite type of pattern. So I think in every mantra uh, they, they correspond to particular type of patterns and uh, that are experimentally determined and the pioneering works uh, begin in Switzerland. Now come, uh, comes to the physics, I mean how the patterns are being formed and Prior to that, how universe is being manifested. So according to modern cosmology, depending on the advancement of quantum theory, the universe is being manifested 
from the vibration or so what is that they said that uh, you start with points a set of points and then uh, this substratum consists of set of points and because quantum theory is considered to be valid everywhere whether there is manifested universe or whether there is absence of any universe and wh what what that quantum theory says it says i mean it depends uh, on the discovery of heisenberg heisenberg uncertainty principles according to that principles uh, if you want to observe a particular systems for a very very small time period then there will be huge fluctuation of the energy this is called energy and time uncertainty relations okay so what happens we can think of a substratum called quantum vacuum it's not the devoid of anything or any matter but we say it's full of potentialities so we consider a substratum where uh, there are a lot of activity are going on not the manifested form or manifested world but there are certain points discrete points and the fluctuation of the energy because we are observing very short period of time so if you observe very short period of time there will be huge fluctuation of energy and these huge fluctuation of energy gives rise to manifestation of the universe this is called uh, modern cosmology or modern big bang theory so at the start we are starting with a vacuum vacuum not means devoid of any matter but devoid of all type of potentialities where there are points and there is vibration or fluctuations out of that the whole universe is being created and now the whole question comes what do you mean by whole universe is created i mean there are lot of patterns form symmetry everything is created so the issue is how these forms in the beginning there is no forms we are considering only points and fluctuations or vibrations so out of that we are creating entire universe consisting of forms patterns symmetries characteristics of different forces like gravitational electromagnetic and other things so the very part in an issue starting with a bindu or point inherent with fluctuations how the various attributes like attribute of gravitational field that uh, it uh, attra i mean uh, two if you place two bodies there will be attraction between the two bodies or uh, the apple is why apple is falling towards the earth so these kind of attributes how can you how can you produce how this manifestation of these attributes or like electromagnetic field if you place two charge bodies then if one is plus one is minus they will attract each other called attractive forces or if you consider two positive charges they will repel so called repulsive forces so these are called attributes of the fields and there are many types of fields basically there are four type of fields electromagnetic gravitational strong and weak forces so starting with a bindu and fluctuations the universe is being generated Question. yes i want to just ask you i think if you want to be honest we don't have a quantum theory of gravitation we talk about quantum fluctuations before the big bang or the wing big bang started but we cannot connect that Uh, those fluctuations to what you start do with general relativity so it would only be correct to say that that is a speculation yeah no but that's all i'm saying so no, we shouldn't give the wrong impression no no first thing is that i'm not talking about quantum gravity and second thing is a classical thing i say quantum vacuum not quantum gravity quantization right, of right. the gravity but is what different all thing. i'm saying is the quantum vacuum cannot be related to the the beginning of the big bang because we just don't know how no, to that, do it no that is the present understanding of the modern cosmology it's not my understanding 
But Mon it's not there. Even inflation, which is used to do that, is something which is highly questionable. And that also does it by assumption. You cannot derive it. No, you start with something. And most of the physicists, they believe okay. that... Okay, this is... We'll, we'll talk about it later, okay. because okay. this is none concern. I just want okay. to stick to the I, truth. I, 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 and and let, let me tell you one thing. Yeah, yeah. we can have the discussion. Yeah, maybe later on we can discuss. Yeah. And then, uh, look at the scenario. I mean, it's not very clear. So, uh, here is Big Bang, and then... Maybe we can opt the light or so start yeah, start with a big bang, this point, and then, after a certain time, we are having different type of forces, and then finally, you come here, the cluster of galaxies, and this is the galaxy, this is Taylor system, so during evolution, different type of patterns are being generated, and different type of forces too, or you can look it in another way. If you call this is Big Bang, then uh, people speculated that this is quantum gravity era, then inflation, then Big Bang plus uh, many, many years after passing Big Bang, and then this is called cosmic microwave background radiation, this is called gravitational waves, and uh, now it is, becomes a hot topic, and this year, uh, three people, they share Nobel Prize detecting gravitational waves. And then this is Big Bang plus 14 billion years. And now we are here. So this is the scenario people are, I mean, uh, we, we cannot go back to Big Bang era, but if we look back, we can have a kind of scenario like this. So what I am telling you now, that how geometry is important, so according to general theory of relativity, Einstein discovered it, that geometry is concerned with ideal objects produced by the schematization of experimental. So Einstein discovered the general theory of relativity where he tried to describe the gravitational forces in terms of the geometry. In my lecture, already I told that we need kind of curved geometry to describe uh, gravitation. And in the language of Ernest Mach, Geometry here is concerned with ideal objects produced by the schematization of the experimental objects. We call it physical or empirical geometry. And now, uh, as I told you, the quantum reality and fluctuations. So according to Heisenberg uncertainty relation between energy and time, if you look that if delta t is very, very small, or observation time is very, very small, then as h, bar, this is h means Planck constant, it has a definite numerical value. So if delta t is very, very small, then delta e will be very, very large. So if you observe for a very small interval time, there will be huge amount of fluctuation of the energy. And according to modern cosmology, this huge amount of energy, it uh, helps for the creation of uh, the present universe. And uh, this construct such a theory, we need a space consists of set of discrete points, as I told you, and a process of measurement and quantum fluctuations. Actually, quantum fluctuations is even discovered before uh, discover of this Big Bang cosmology. Even in the beginning of quantum theory, these quantum fluctuations were discovered, which gives rise to a kind of fluctuation even for a simple object like harmonic oscillator. So quantum fluctuation is there and it is related with Heisenberg uncertainty relations. And now, uh, if you look at this figure, we say this is called cosmic microwave background radiations. I mean, because of the Big Bang theory, people uh, said that there will be a remnant of the radiation which appears at the time of Big Bang, and its temperature is 2.7 degree Kelvin, and it is uh, distributed all over the universe. And if you look at the image, uh, you, can, you can see that uh, this is kind of patterns of the cosmic microwave background radiations. 
and this is pattern for galaxy. So now we are coming, what is the ontology of geometry? We have seen that universe is being manifested, different patterns can be generated, different attributes of the fields can be generated, but what is the ontology of the geometry? When I say ontology of geometry, we are asking the questions, what are the uh, basic or more primitive notion than the geometric notion? We say pre-geometric notions. So starting with pre-geometric notions, how the geometric structure or patterns are being emerged. So th this is like we, we say this is ontology of space-time or ontology of geometry. The question is whether geometry can exist independently or simply void of any material element like a priori notion of the Kant or depends on our senses like induction geometry of Indian. And uh, as I already told that uh, there is a shortest scale called Planck scale and uh, shortest length scale, time scale. So the issue is challenge in 21st century physics is that how space time arises out of more primitive notion called pre-geometric notion. Because below that scale, there is no concept of space, time, or causality. But uh, beyond that scale, I mean, in everyday experience, we have concept of space, continuum space, continuum time, as well as the causality, which, which are the pillars of modern, modern science. So can you think of more primitive notion than the what you call geometric notions. So this is one of the big challenge. And some progress are already made. And people, uh, there are two schools in this regard. One is uh, Penrose, Smolin. They consider that there is a kind of network connecting with different points all over the universe. And this network gives rise to the continuity of the space times. Or Myself and my collaborator, Ralph Abraham, we suggested a kind of network along the network among the different po discrete points. And out of that, continuity of the space-time arises. So this is like more like Buddhist concept of Indra's network. So before the Planck scale, there is a kind of network which gives rise to continuity of the space and time. And the question is, what was there before Big Bang? Space time, what was the space time before Big Bang? And in Big Bang cosmology, the universe arises from a point due to fluctuation. And this fluctuation is the existence of quantum principle like Heisenberg uncertainty principles. So now, uh, the essential point here is to introduce kind of ordering principles or kind of measurement procedure for here we are using a kind of measurement procedure for observing in a very small time period. So essentially we require the discrete points, kind of ordering principles and by that we are producing a kind of distance functions like whether two points are near or two points are far away. So nearness and far away principles, we have to introduce here. So to produce any kind of form or pattern, you need several aspects. So what are those aspects? We need to consider a set of points, then ordering of points and concept of distance, hence concept of measurement, and then we need concept of vibration or fluctuations. So we need these three important things, start with bindu or points, then we consider a principle of ordering along with vibration or fluctuation. By that way, we can produce a form, patterns, and many, many types of simple and complex form or complex patterns. Now we are going to our ancient Indian wisdom. So you have five minutes. Yeah, I'm finishing just. Uh, in Kashmiri Shaivism, there is a concept they use called spanda. So spanda means kind of vibrations. And when they consider 
spanda or vibration, there is no concept of space time or the material world. So uh, people might conceive it kind of logical ordering. So from that, uh, the space time and matter, they can, that can be created. So this is like a uh, vibration in quantum vacuum, but that is more physical rather than the spando in Kashmiri Shaivajim. And also in Kalo Chakra Tantra, in Kalo Chakra Tantra, a word sphorana or vibrating in the splendor refers to the source of vibration of mantra and clear light. So in many traditions, we have the concept of vibration or spando. And if you look at the Ishopanishad Mantra 4, in Ishopanishad Mantra 4, there is a very interesting word related here in the last line, Matarishwa. So the word Matarishwa consists of the two words, Matari and Swas. Matari ordinarily means mother. But uh, one Indian scholar, he suggested that it as a space, as a substratum of, substratum of distance. From the uh, root ma, you, it means to measure. So the word swas is translated as the breather. So a space with breathing. So this is a, like a space consists of points which is fluctuating. So space is considered here is a substratum of distance as related to word matarishwa. In relativity, the distance again is measured by concept of light in, con in contrast to the rigid body in Newtonian paradigm. So there is some parallels here in Upanishadic sloko and also in modern cosmology. And finally, maybe I, I'm going to end uh, within few seconds. Uh, the modern neuroscientists, they have proposed a geometric or dynamic geometry and brain function. What is that? Uh, we have external world called external reality and we have internal world internal world associated with central nervous systems so the issue is how the brain or central nervous systems they recognize the objects in the external world because uh, suppose you are looking at the building it's 10 feet high and you are looking at the building 100 feet high but in the brain even the scale is different scale is not linear so it is called logarithmic scale. So even if the outside world is normally fit, but in the brain itself, its scale is different. So how do you define the geometry associated with the neuronal architecture or the brain and the geometry outside? And this kind of associations will reveal the really uh, the origin of geometry in terms of the brain function. And here, when we say internalization of the external world, internalization will mean ability of the nervous system to fracture external reality into sets of sensory messages and to stimulate such reality in brain reference frames. So this is called dynamic geometry. And there are many, many issues which should be studied so that even uh, it will be, uh, it will lead to uh, new openings to understand sense dependent or consciousness dependent geometry and I am just ending my uh, slide maybe uh, giving the mark Ernest mark he emphasized that without cooperation among sensory perception in the sense of inductive reasoning the understanding of a scientific geometry would be inconceivable and famous mathematician Clifford on his name there is a uh, algebra called Clifford algebra 1886 he studied similar issue on the foundation of geometry and asked about the existence of something that is not part of the material or phenomenal world, such as matter and its motion, and that is the non-phenomenal counterpart. So he would also believe that there is definite role of senses in understanding geometry. And the brain and sacred geometry, I, I told in my lecture also that uh, if you can understand sense-dependent or consciousness-dependent geometry, then it will uh, really make a bridge in connecting yantra and mandala and uh, the meditation aspect. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.
Discussion, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My maybe, microphone. Uh, maybe that my my query doesn't stand to reason, but still I have. Do you think geometry or geometrical form is not a form as such? I'm very ambiguous to you. Mm -hmm. It is in itself is a form. How can you visualize anything which does not have the form? So geometry in its shape has the form. So how 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 to how to Yeah, well, I'm saying any form is nothing but a geometric structure. We say in general form, because when you say geometry, it has a definite property in mathematics. But form, you can have different form, more general term. But it's a geometry. OK. Three short query on a beautiful presentation. Does every form geometrical? Second, and does every geometry has a mathematical algorithmic base? And third, arising from same, is geometry manifestation of particular constant numbers? If so, whether we have discovered all those constant numbers or we need to discover more to understand geometry better? Now, uh, maybe uh, first to our comments, and last comment I have something to say, that uh, all geometry has, doesn't have really fixed numbers, because there is a geometry uh, which is developed in 20th century called statistical geometry. Most of the physicists and mathematicians, they don't know it. But there are many works on that. According to statistical geometry, even the distance between two points, they, are, they behave like random way. And there is a distribution of this distance function. So they don't really give you the fixed number. But you can have a distribution of the numbers itself. That, that's a new development. I, even I published a book on statistical geometry in 1996, published by Kluver, Kluver Academic. And Carl Minger was the father figure who uh, discussed from mathematician's point of view what is probabilistic or statistical geometry. Yeah. Uh, Professor, thank you for a very nice lecture. I'd just like to know what is the difference between the sense uh, we are talking about the sense-dependent and the consciousness-dependent. What is the difference between that? Uh, sense-dependent, I mean, uh, we have like uh, different type of sensory organs, like visual, auditory, or uh, other kind of senses. But uh, the problem is that uh, the stimulus is coming from external world. It is going through the senses. Okay, and now at a certain stage, the nervous system. They bind all the, like you are looking at the apple. And apple has a color, apple has a sometimes smell, and apple has a shape. So our different senses, they picked up stimulus from the same apple. And then at a certain stage, brain binds these different senses and say, ah, oh, this is apple. So people might say, instead of saying sensory dependent geometry, better to say that how it should be, uh, consciousness dependent in the sense that semantic aspect. Okay. Because uh, how to interpret? The information are coming through my eyes, through my smell, but brain at a certain stage interprets. Oh, this is like, it has this smell, it has like this. So maybe it is better to say the consciousness dependent. Cognitive. Yeah. Cognitive knowledge. Because consciousness is something beyond that. No, when you say cognitive, it has a kind of inherent interpretive functions. When you say I cognize these things, so you have like notion of semantic notion already. Is it not? Otherwise, how do you say cognitive aspect? It's knowing something. It's not simply information is coming, but interpretation of information too. So that's why brain researchers, they say that brain not only process information, but it interprets what this information is. When you say that uh, the geometry, uh, sense-dependent geometry, then it gives the impression that uh, the, the very uh, nature of the geometry itself is uh, dependent on sense. Yes. But when, according to your, 
your the, the example of the apple, it is, uh, you know, uh, out there ontologically and re yeah. realistically, but the way we perceive it and then how we cognitively, you know, make everything as an apple through various uh, sens sensual, yeah. you know, uh, you know, mediums. Yeah. Then we apprehend this apple as a whole. Yeah. Not just the shape, not just the color, color or the yeah. The taste. Then we get the holistic uh, understanding yeah. of apple. But that does not. Uh, these kind of approach does not. Uh, you know, the, the geometry itself is not dependent on sense. So rather than we are dependent on. You know, the, the the person is dependent on sense in order to grab the reality of the object. No, we are. What we are saying. Mm -hmm that there is a geometry called internal geometry associated with functional states of neurons, mm -hmm. billions of neurons. And when there is a stimulus from apple, then the functional states of the neuron will be modulated. Like you take a uh, sarod, musical instrument, and you pluck the string. So different type of patterns will be, patterns in the sound will be generated. So, so there is already potentiality or like patterns inside also. Yeah. So, but that is not, uh, you know, making any change. No. The geometry itself is not dependent on sense. No. The, wh what we are... understanding and grabbing the object itself is dependent on sense mediums. Yeah, sense medium. Yeah. yeah. So, not the geometry itself is dependent on sense. That is what I... Yeah, yeah. I but know. when you say sense dependent means our uh, geometry in the functional states is also modulated. Yeah, cognitive domain. Subject. Huh? Yeah. That is very yeah. That's different. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm going in another direction. Um, my question is very basic, and I'm a specialist. I'm a non specialist. My question is very basic. Um, you have the uh, formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, a very uh, fundamental equation we find in geometry. Space is there, but where is time? I don't understand how does time come in this whole formula. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> then, then. I can also ask the question. Okay. You, you can ask? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. That's a very layman's way of looking at it because I'm not a scientist. But I was very intrigued by the word consciousness geometry. Because if there is such a geometry, then different people would have different form consciousness about it. So would it be universal? I this mean, is, this is very uh, so interesting question that I can tell you. Uh, just I'm coming to your point. Uh, you, you know there is a concept in geometry and physics also called invariance. So if we don't have a concept of invariance inbuilt somewhere, suppose you, you are running a car in the street and uh, say the distance, uh, another car is coming. If to me it's totally subjective, like two feet, and to other people, maybe five feet, there might be really collision and problem. So how to resolve that? To understand that, brain has to has a capacity in the geometric structure kind of invariance. So that uh, this is a problem in uh, brain geometry, how this invariance is created. Invariance means it is applicable. It does not depend on particular person. It is not first person's experience. Otherwise, this world, we cannot manage it. So that, that's a, one of the uh, challenging questions in dynamic geometry. And people have some solutions. Maybe you can discuss it. And yeah, this is a good question again. Uh, people used to think in Newtonian paradigm that uh, when you define a distance between two points, only there is spatial structure. But when Einstein discovered spatial theory of relativity, he said that uh, the dimension of the geometry is four. And three space and one time, but they are on the same footing. Footing in the sense we cannot really separate time and space there, but it is a four dimensions. So the distance there is a square plus b square plus c square plus something which is related to time. So this is a four dimensional structure. But I don't understand how does time come in the formation of a particular geometric form? No, because, because we are looking here. Uh, the everyday geometry is a three-dimensional structure, okay, like this room or this table, chair, etc. But to make a theory consistent, you need uh, to develop a kind of four-dimensional geometry, the projection of which is our everyday world. But we need that type of concept to build up a consistent theory. And, and that's very 
you know, interesting questions because we are in the uh, ordinary world, everyday world with three-dimensional geometry, but we are formulating a theory which is basically four dimensions. Yeah. Can we say that uh, the, uh, you know, the, the geometry itself is uh, visual, the temporal, uh, you know, the temporal quality or the temporal property of the geometry is not visual? No. But it is a property of the... No, we, we cannot differentiate there spatial or temporal. Yeah, the, but, but it is, uh, as you said, uh, you have to you know, assign a property of a fourth dimension. Yeah, fourth dimension, not temporal dimension. I see. What is that? We, we make it all in the same dimension. I say, see. X, Y, G, and when you say uh, the fourth dimension, it's not simply T. Uh -huh. It's of the same order of the dimension. Yeah. There is always a problem whenever you differentiate it, you know, the temporal property from its uh, the uh, object itself, because uh, no, according, that according to Dharmakirti and uh, Dignaga, uh, the temporal you know property is uh, intrinsic property of the entity itself, mm -hmm. and which cannot be dissected by any mode. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, you can dissect it, but uh, you know you cannot uh, dissect it uh, objectively because that is the very nature. Either in the micro, you know, micro level or in the, you know, the uh, macro level. So it it is not, uh, you know, conceptually we can dissect it, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I do agree. This type yeah. of problem is there. We have yeah. You see, conceptual level we can have. Yes. But in the real uh, everyday life, we have no. No, it yeah. cannot be. Okay. So I just wanted to ask a very general question. You are right about the fact that the brain and everything can be mapped geometrically into a network. There yeah. is a graph theory for that. Yeah. And most of the other things that you said I think are possible. Now the question is that this is a visual sense yes. geometry. Can everything be described in the world that we have in being as, as, as visual? I think that no, is... No, uh, even in auditory, it's not a universal No, no uh, even in answer. auditory world you have a network also. Right, right. But the uh, question I'm asking you is that, uh, as far as this whole assembly is concerned, can everything, all our understanding, all our experience, is, can all, all of it be described geometrically? That's the understanding of present neuroscience. That everything can be described in terms of... Network. No, no. Let's not make an absolute statement. No. I, I have my doubts about it. That's no, no, why okay. I'm asking you. <laughs> but, but, you know, you have to proceed with something and then... Uh, okay. No, no, I agree. But her, her, to her question, her question was that the geometric form that you talk about, with time it just keeps changing. So yeah. you keep look at the form, it will change from time to time. So yeah. it can be described geometrically. It's a procession of forms. Yeah. Yeah. No, not only that, problem is that you I, cannot I, think of four-dimensional form. I see. Only uh, when you think of three-dimensional form. Right. We say it's a projection of four dimension to the everyday world. So we are looking at the evolution of the three-dimensional form. That you can visualize. I think there is a problem, uh, you know, not only in cultural but also in understanding the world itself. Yeah. Uh, from the neuroscience and the modern science, uh, the entire world is, uh, you know, confined in the physical world, right? And uh, when we talk, talk about mind, then it is the neurons and those yeah. physical yeah. entities. They are the consciousness or they are but uh, according to our tradition, the Indian tradition, we have a non-physical object and then we have mental object and then we have physical object. Yeah. Everything that exists in the universe are divided into three categories. That is, one is the physical you know, entity, another is the consciousness, non-physical entity, uh, consciousness, and then the third one is neither physical nor con consciousness uh, entity, but which are, you know, which exist. Yeah. So those are the abstracts and no, then... That's, that's, that's the debate is going on. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have to bring up that debate, yeah. you know. <laughs> Sir, a short, just short uh, uh, intervention here. Uh, suppose our... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this will be the last question. Uh -huh. We have another yes. paper. Yeah, please, go ahead. Or uh, suppose our eyes were not here, it would have been somewhere mm -hmm. else. Or suppose we yeah, have another see. bionic eye somewhere, then how we are going to perceive whether geometry will be same or it will change. Mm -hmm. Say, what we are looking at this screen, it is flat, but from Pick's perspective, it may be a hyperbolic geometry. Whether geometry itself is relativistic and it depends upon the positioning of our current positioning of our senses. Let, let, let me sharpen your question. Uh, you know, according to 
uh, the question is not so sharp. I can sharp your question. Uh, according to American Association for Blind People, we are blind yeah, by birth. Okay. And according to them, that a bl uh, blind persons cannot have a dream with geometric figures. Mm. Yeah, according to their current opinion. But there are some evidences I can show you, people already collected, that even a blind person, he told I have a dream and I went to a particular room, the room, shape of the room is this, shape of the door is this, so debate has again started regarding this opinion. Mm -hmm. This, this is a new arena, mm -hmm. and they did not publish it yet, but some neuroscientists, they have a survey, mm -hmm. and they are making more experimental observations. So thank, thank you very much. <laughs> so now we have Professor Kanchi Gopinathji.